So thank you for attending conference 2022. I've got to get my numbers right because it was 2020 that the previous one was supposed to have been done. Um, I'm going to just quickly go through um, how we've progressed since the last conference in 2017. Um, today we've, uh, the numbers are 200 de delegates. We've got 14 guest speakers, eight genetic counsellors. There's 38 children here, although most of them are downstairs. 22 of those have, have got vascular EDS. In total, 65 with heads here. Uh, this evening we've got 160 booked in for dinner, and um, tomorrow 128 on the train on the East Lancashire Railway. So a good turnout, thank you. Um, for those that don't know who we are or are new to us, um, and because we're recording it, um, anybody that picks up on the videos, we're a UK registered charity that started back in uh, 2014. Um, so we look after families that are touched by vascular EDS. Our main aim is from day one and um, to where we are now is education, support and research. Um, a lot of our effort is on the support element. I think that's probably 90% of what we do. Um, but now we're entering into research which wasn't on the agenda for the 2020 conference. So in the last two years, We've come a long way in this, uh, I'll, I'll share that with you. We work closely with the EDS National Diagnostic Service, which is a highly specialised service by NHS England. Uh, both clinics are here today. We work with Sheffield and Norfolk Park London. So it's good to see all the teams are here. Uh, and just some milestones from the last conference. So we held the first one in May 2017, which again was a success and the, the, the world's first. The year after, we were awarded the Queen's Award for Voluntary Service, thanks to our volunteers and, and the people that support you guys in the room. We then hosted the first uh, family retreat weekend, which was at Blackpool, of all places, but it was a success for those that have never been. Um, we then took on our patient coordinator, Christine Fellows, and I put hash in brackets Cooper, because like, there was a confusion this year whether we'd taken on another Christina or had she got married, and it was neither of those, she just changed her surname. Um, and then in October 2019, the research started, so with Northwood Park, uh, jointly funded with EDS UK, uh, we began our journey with research. And then, a week before lockdown, we launched the research support box across the UK, all fully booked, the trains were booked, the flights were booked, the people were booked on the events, and then literally got we got the Cambridge one off the ground with the Lee School and literally a week after Boris put us in lockdown. Um, so we then went to virtual where we could um, but we're now pleased to say that we're back uh, across the country again and they're all launched so every region's got a regional coordinator. And then the good news is last year we managed to get lottery funding for the next three years so uh, financially we're in a good position now. Um, and then only six weeks ago, our new patient coordinator started, Danica, and Danica's in the room with Christine, if you want to stand up and say hello. So that's Danica. So I'm on the big screen anyway. And then from funding, I'm just going to quickly touch on it. So you can see most of our income that we generate is through our families and, and their friends and families. Um, so probably 95% of Angle's challenge income comes from the people that we support. And year on year, there's been continual growth and then lockdown came, and 50% was wiped out in that year. However, we managed to get a bit of government support to keep us going. We cut some costs out and we had some good reserves. So we've, we got through the pandemic and we've now ended the last financial year more than what we'd uh, ended up on before we went into lockdown. So we've, we've bounced back really strong thanks to the support of the people in the room and across the country and America. We get a lot of funding from America now. Which leads us on to our vision uh, what, and what does that look like. So typically each year we're coming across 40 new people that are, are, are either diagnosed with vascular EDS or have had the diagnosis for a long time but only just roots out. So if we carry on with that run rate and apologies for the picture it looks like a fag packet. <laughs> um, but genuinely it was that me and Christina one day in the office we just said look if it's 40 people every year that's coming through the numbers will grow, what does it look like over the next five years? Are we going to need extra staff? We will need extra staff. Um, there's going to be more children coming on board, so we're going to be doing more talks in schools and more travelling. 
we're going to generate more income because there's more people supporting us. Um, so we think on the current run rate we'll be at 500 members compared to 355 is where we are today. So we are going to have to increase our resources. Um, and we took a decision, we're doing it. We're, we're just going to do it, we'll, we'll get there. However, three years of that, the lottery's come in and said we'll help you with that. So they've put in just short of 200,000 and it's took a lot better off and basically every pound or dollar we raise now can go straight into the research pot um, because the lottery is funding the cost of everything else so it's brilliant and the run rate is suggesting that by 2025 we'll be at a million pounds of turnover which I think for a really tiny small charity is pretty amazing thanks to everybody that supports the charity and with that we can then embark on more research but the local level stuff that makes the difference day to day so thank you, and that, that was the presentation we got for by the Murph for the check. Um, on to spot research, there is a lot going on compared to two years ago. Um, so from a support programme point of view, which is what the lottery is funded, uh, it's the school support element where I'll go in with Christina or Danica into a school and talk about beds, put care plans in place, help put care teams together, ambulance markers on the home address or school address. We've, we obviously run the helpline. We provide emergency information in conjunction with our uh, two clinics. We now are quite heavily involved with mental health because we know that that is an issue, not just with a rare disease, but in general. So we, we're all first aid trained now. Um, we provide referrals to the EDA service. We've talked about our patient coordinators and the regional support groups. And then from a research point of view, you can see what we have been doing, what we're currently doing and what's coming up. So we've got the Norfolk Park database research that was started a couple of years ago. Psychosocial study by Leon Barrett, and she will talk about that later on. Barriers to Care with Eds in the UK, which was done by three student genetic counsellors in Canada. Uh, they can't be here with us today, so the usual, we've zoomed in with a, pit, uh, a video, and they'll talk about how that project went. We've got the Sheffield Statistical Study that's currently on the go. Uh, for next year, uh, a student genetic counsellor is going to take on relationships and intimacy that came about through Leanne's study. So it's opening more doors. Uh, Christine has just done mindfulness, meditation and mental health. Uh, I'm currently looking at school activity uh, with the children that we've got. We've got 74 children on the day base of which 58 are at primary or secondary age. Family communications which Claire Green's looking at and we've got a PGT research study and a natural history study and that's quite a lot so it's good. Um, and then from project point of view, we're here today with Beds Conference, Beds Beds Day next Friday. Uh, we've got a retreat weekend in September at Cabby World for our chocolate lovers, so there's 30 families booked on that. Um, we've currently got a big project on the go, emergency care project, we'll talk about it later. Um, we mentioned school programme, uh, which will lead us to a new information pack that's going to be launched soon. And we've got two clinical trials, which is massive as well. Uh, one being Enter Story, I'm not going to talk too much about it because Nate and Tolfer are here from A2. Thank you for coming all the way from the States. Um, but for those that don't know, it's to evaluate the effectiveness of a drug called Enter Story in preventing cardiac and arterial events in patients with beds. Um, working really, really well in the mice model. Um, we've uh, hopefully get it to a clinical trial, but the guys will talk you through that. And then the other trial in, in the United States is to look at the effectiveness of Slipralone. ACE is carrying, uh, carrying out that trial. Um, we've got Slipralone over here licensed, uh, but it'd be interesting to see the findings of that study. A snapshot of the last get together and they've grown a bit since then. <laughs> and then a quick one on Reds for Beds, it is next Friday. It's the third Friday of every May. We launched it back in 2015 and it's absolutely flying now and I don't think we can keep on top of it anymore. There's that many that share pictures on the day, but we'll do our best. Um, simply wear red, take a picture and use the has hashtag reds for beds. Uh, that's Brad in Australia that gets involved. Some of the schools. Um, and then quickly I'll just touch on timekeeping, although I was seven minutes late this morning. <laughs> but I've pinched it from another slot later on, so we will get back on track. Um, so where you can, when we've got a break, so we've got a ne the next break's at 10.40, if you can get back in here for two minutes to 11 for Duncan's talk. Lunch is at 12, if we can get back for 1.15 and then we've got another break at 5 past 3. We're going to try and do a group 
four to twelve o'clock. Could be problematic because there's a lot of us, but we'll give it a go. Um, dress code this evening is smart casual, drinks reception at seven. We've got genetic council workshops tomorrow between half eight and uh, sorry, half nine and eleven. Um, and please put your names down on the sheets in terms of which group you want to go into. The coaches leave at 11.15 prompt to get us to these lines, which is 10 minutes away, but we can't relate with that because the knock-on effect is we missed the train. Um, check out by 11 tomorrow. Those that have got children downstairs at lunchtime at 12 o'clock, if you can go and grab the kids, your children, bring them back up. We'll try and do this group short. Let's have lunch together. Um, Bottom line, just have a really, really good day and a good day tomorrow. Those that stay home, and thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Kay Julia. I'm the managing director of Bellas Danlos Support UK. Um, we're very pleased to be jointly running this weekend's conference. Um, I'd like to extend my welcome on behalf of Earth and our Support UK and just to thank everybody for being here. I know a lot of you have travelled a long way and we're really grateful to have you with us this weekend. Earth and our Support UK supports people in the UK with any type of Earth and our Syndrome. Um, education and research are two other main um, pillars of our work and I'd like to thank the National EDS Diagnostic Service and all today's speakers for really delivering on those two aspects. Um, we funded, uh, we're very pleased to have funded almost £40,000 of vascular EDS research in the last three years. Uh, it doesn't sound a lot, it's not a lot compared to what needs to be done, but it's, I think it's a great start and we are committed to increasing that over the next five years and I know you're going to be hearing about some of that research today which is fantastic. To me, this weekend's programme really reflects the complexities and the challenges of vascular EDS. But I also think that the evolution of the programme since the last conference five years ago really reflects some real progress in our understanding of the condition and the support available. So have a great weekend. Thank you again so much for being here and I hope we meet your expectations. Thank you. to be here with you all in person today. Welcome to each and every one of you. The EDS National Diagnostic Service has, as you know, remained open through the pandemic. We've just not been open in the up close and personal way that we like to be, um, but we've had lots of contacts with many of you throughout this time and have, we hope, been there for you just as much as you've needed us. I do recall the very last day that the last patient who we saw in person in Sheffield in our clinic was a new diagnosis of vascular EDS. And our manager was saying to me, we can't let anybody else onto the premises. And I said, what's the cutoff time? And she said, it's 12 o'clock today. And I said, marvellous, we'll be out of here, it's 11.59. <laughs> and we were, and that was a patient in whom we managed a pregnancy and delivery um, during lockdown um, with a happy outcome. So there's a lot of joy in our work and I'm sure you'll see that reflected in our teams. Um, we really love the work that we do and we hope that you feel the dedication um, that we feel. Now we've got a packed program today as, as everybody has said and keen to run on time because I know there are treats tonight and you're going to be wanting to look your best for the dinner. Um, so, we're going to stick to, strike to, to timekeeping, but also just to say that what we did at the conference last time, and I'd like to do again today, is to restrict questions to the breaks. So, everybody speaking today is very happy to answer your questions in person, rather than during the session. And the reason that we've done that is because we feel that sometimes Quieter people have important questions to ask and are too shy to ask them. But also, because people in the room are affected by the diagnosis, questions are necessarily personal, and we feel that they're much better answered on a one-to-one -one basis. We would also suggest, just in the interests of social distancing, that it might be an idea for one-to-one -one questions to happen perhaps out in the foyer or even on the steps outside. It is a beautiful day today. 
just so that we can all continue to keep safe.